There we go. Hi, hi everybody. I'm Chris Leatham, and this is The Economy and You here at Think Tech Hawaii. Today's guest is June Dillinger, and today we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship, especially entrepreneurship for, for folks that are sort of uh, 50 and uh, maybe a little older and trying to figure out how to, to launch a new enterprise. I know a lot of us work for other companies for a lot of years, but our dream is to have our own company. And June, thank you for being on Think Tech Hawaii here. Uh, and the economy in you. I'm happy to be here. I like how it says 50 and you say or something. Or something, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of us, you know, we, we, we're entrepreneurs at heart, but uh, you know, when you're young, you're, you find yourself working for somebody else. And, uh, but then eventually, you know, you say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast my sails to the wind and see where it takes me. And you did that. I did, and I don't know that uh, it came up in just that sort of way. It was sort of a divine guidance after I had left many, many, many jobs. I, I mean, honestly, I've had um, as close to 75 jobs as you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, some of them very long term, some of them short. I worked for Delta Airlines for 13 years. That's my caveat. Yeah. And I did a lot of others, other jobs as well. But my belief is, is that everything that I've done has lead me to, led me toward the ex success of where I am now. Because in this industry of the wedding business, mm -hmm all kinds of people get married yes and as a destination wedding business owner I get calls from people all over the country and all over the world and so being able to take the experiences from where I have come from mm -hmm. and filter them into the present it, it works beautifully well you've been doing this business for how long now five years five years Wow yeah five years. and every year it gets a little bigger a little bigger a little better I'm not gonna say bigger but I am going to say better yeah I have um, changed my pricing a little bit. I'm not the least expensive and I'm not the most expensive. Although I was just sharing with somebody earlier in the day that my business is more of a feeling business rather than a thinking business. Yes. And I just, I happen to think that there are a lot of people that... Uh, so what you're saying is if we were thinking more, we would do wedding, we would do less weddings if we were... You would choose a different service. <laughs> is that right? You would choose a different service, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because my, my business has a feeling sort of sensation to it. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've been to one of your weddings. Yes, you have. Yes, and it was very nice. I even asked you if you'd like to work with me yes. as an officiant. Yeah, yeah, doing the Japanese wedding I'm thing. Like, I'm I not need, quite a, sure I need a holy guy that speaks Japanese. <laughs> I need a white guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. Tall and handsome. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Just butter me up. Get get anything you want. Um, so we have, um, you know, we we've sort of been we met at Toastmasters and and it's been a great experience there. Um, and it seems like there are a lot of people that are involved in the Toastmasters organizations are sort of entrepreneurial people. You know, they're they're sort of motivated to to do better and to they set goals for themselves and I. That's one of the great things I've got out of that organization. Um, and meeting you and, of course, some of the other wonderful people over there. You started this business five years ago, and, and we've, we've talked about how to grow the business and how you wanted to grow the business and what your vision is. Um, how, how, do you find, how do you find in terms of what are the biggest challenges that you have to, to get to a place where you have growth? The internet seems to be the answer to everything. Mm -hmm. While I'd like to believe that it was connecting with hoteliers, the concierge, um, referrals, it seems that everybody goes to the internet. So um, I have uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. I've had Instagram for several years, and I spoke with a friend the other day, and she says, it looks like you haven't been on your Instagram account for two years, June. Oh. And so I'm like, well, give me a refresher course. You're in your 20s. You could probably help me out. Mm -hmm. And so it's really about keeping up with technology, what the general masses are looking at. Mm -hmm. Because now that I'm on Instagram and it's only been about six days, I can't believe all the hits that I'm getting uh, for putting up one single photograph. And it's, it's a way to spread, a whole other way to spread to business. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come through Facebook. I've been on Facebook for a long time. And, uh, you think Facebook has gotten too big? No. No? No. It's just 
billions of people on Facebook it's today. The more, the more challenging thing in my business is because there's so many different forms of communication. Mm -hmm. Some people send information to me through Facebook. Some people through, send it through an instant message. Some people want to send it through WhatsApp. Some people want to send it through Line. Some people, there are all of these uh, um, apps now that you can communicate on. And mm -hmm. I say, you know what? Email is the best form for me to keep your stuff in order. And so for me to invite the conversation for them to communicate my way mm -hmm. so I can do the best for them, it's very challenging because it's languaging. Yes. Now, 65% of my business is same sex. Set aside the fact that a woman can have the name of Alex and a man can have the name of Alex. Yes. And they could actually be a couple. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and, sure so and so figuring out uh -huh in conversation and email when it's not on the telephone because most people talk on their handheld devices now and text on that is how can I be polite and get the most gentle words across and also support them in their dreams in a text message yeah it is, uh, so it most of it comes through the internet to answer your question so that's where the, the business now when you once you have a client or when somebody starts to, to talk to you what do you find um, where is most of your time and energy spent in communication and email Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it's really great uh, when a couple, they can't wait, and so they pick up the phone and they call me, and we were able to get through all of the details right away. Yeah. But most people, they're, they're multitasking, and so they send off a text or they send off an email, and a lot of my business is on the other side of the planet or on the other side of uh, America. And so while I'm working at night, they're sleeping. And when they get up in the morning, they have an email. Yeah. And then I get to go to sleep, and it's a really nice exchange. So now... Most of your business is coming from the mainland. Is that about right? Mostly from the mainland and Australia. Australia. Yeah. I heard from the folks down under. Okay. I don't know why, and I'm perfectly delighted. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, 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 neat. that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, if you were going to look at sort of this wedding business in Hawaii, where, where are we at? Are we saturated? Is there room for more growth in Hawaii in the wedding business? We have the Japanese are, that are coming here. We see other markets in the world. I think there are other markets in places like China and, and I completely, Korea. I completely agree with you. As a matter of fact, I had a call the other day from a woman uh, from a Chinese wedding business. Uh -huh. And she said, I have a same-sex female wedding I'd like to speak to you about. And I'd like to be able to uh, connect with you in order to make um, an agreement of some sort so that we could perhaps use your services regularly. And I said... Chris is going to like this news. Yes, 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 yes. That's great news. That's great <laughs> that's news. Great yeah, news. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so I definitely think so. And that's not to say, I mean, the way my business came about, I was working in prison ministry. And I, I was about three and a half years in working at Halava and Wayava mm -hmm. twice a week. And one uh, Saturday morning, I was walking out, and one of my colleagues said, June, why don't you join my wedding business? And I said, doing what? And she said, well, m marrying people, of course. And Chris, I went like this. And she poked me. She said, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I am speaking to you. There's nobody else standing here. Uh -huh. And I couldn't believe it. And I had just competed in the state championship for Toastmasters that year. I was uh -huh. one of the top 10. Uh -huh. And um, I said, all right, I'll follow you. And so I worked with her for about six months until I realized that I could do it on my own. And I asked her permission. I said, I can do this myself, but I'd like your blessing mm -hmm. because I don't want to be in competition with you. And she gave me the most valuable lesson of my life. And it was, there's enough love and money for everyone. Mm. How can I support you? Oh. And so since then, uh, I've actually I married uh, one gal to her fiance and uh, I have supported her in opening her own wedding business. And I just have to believe that because that's the way abundance comes, is by mm -hmm, giving. Mm -hmm. And so, well, come on, Chinese, come. Come on, Koreans, come. Come on, yes. Japanese, come. Let's see what we can do to keep giving. So, yeah. um, having, having, you know, now you're sort of reaching out and doing more international or sort of looking at more international opportunities. Um, do you think that there's going to be some additional challenges that you're going to, to have to overcome? Oh, the internal piece. 
most definitely. Yeah. I, I've, uh, I'm a people person. And so just conquering uh, QuickBooks, I mean, maybe that's why my hair turned white. <laughs> oh my God, it was so challenging just to get QuickBooks down there. That was like a whole summer's worth of lessons. Uh -huh. And so to be able to have multitudes of weddings, and my goal is to do 30 weddings a month. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm between 10 to 15. And they're small. I mean, I never have more than 15 or 20 people that come. But I know that um, right now I can handle about 30. It would be great if I was doing 50. I have a fabulous team, and I know they all want to work. So yeah. I think it's the internal structure. I might need your help with that. Okay, okay. We'll sort that. We'll sort that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all a software issue, you know. It's all software. It's all software. Development. We'll figure it out. And There's an app for this. Yeah, you know. and that's the tech part that I need support with. Right, definitely. right, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, it's um, one of the great things about technology is it's a problem-solving tool. And as, as we, we did, the last couple of shows that we did, we did some shows about how do you sort of, sort of start with developing software to help you solve business-related problems, which was great. And Jay Fidel actually was on my show. We talked about databases um, uh, with Jay. Very, yeah, very yeah, exciting. Yeah. Now, he's very excited about something called QuickBase, which is the, produced by the same company who produces QuickBooks. So he's like, I don't know, you know. I might have to have a talk with yeah, him afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> have a talk with yeah. him. And um, so um, now you um, you started this business, and and um, you're into other things as well. Though you're also a minister. I am. I served as the associate spiritual leader at Unity Windward last year. Mm -hmm. And um, bless Reverend Gio, he wanted me to stay on a year, and I said I can't. I have I have I have a nudge to go do something else. Mm -hmm. I'm not clear on what it is, and I knew that it would make room for others. And uh, actually, I'm headed off to Unity of Dallas to give a couple sermons for two, two congregations of 150 each. So it's going to be really wonderful. That's great. And it's about the five-star five star experience. And that's about you being the five stars. You being the five stars. You. Yeah. You. Me. Yes, you. Okay. Well, I've, yeah. I've, I've, had a, I've seen a few stars in my time. I've, I've gotten wallops pretty good a couple of times. <laughs> I saw some stars. Uh, so um, now, when you're doing all this work with doing the weddings, what do you find is the most rewarding part of this business? Because, you know, I I, I watch the the picture taking and and all of this. Um, the couple that um, we t uh, that you invited me to come and attend the wedding. This was a guy that had been with this woman for I think about eight years or or longer, and uh, he finally said, "Well, we." He was very romantic about it. He said, well, might as, well, might as well get married while we're there. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, that's a really good question because I think what's the most rewarding is when a thank you note comes in. Mm -hmm. And they are astounded by the connectivity, the customer service. They're overwhelmed by the incredible photographs. They're delighted by this, the service itself and mm -hmm. how the vows were delivered, um, our voices. My team is... My team is really service oriented, and so they pay deep attention to the needs of our couples, and not just the couples, but like the the children, and how do we gather all the children together, and and are we watching out for the the bigger picture, and saying, well, let me take your cell phone, I'll snap a few shots for you. I know you mm -hmm. don't have a photographer. Let's not miss out. So, the thank you note that comes in is really the greatest reward because it takes a lot of effort for people to send a thank you note. Most people don't do it anymore. Mm. And so it's a beautiful reward yeah. to have that. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that it needs to go to a Yelp review or a Wedding Wire review or The Knot or mm -hmm. uh, Google Plus. If it's just a note to us, it's, yeah. it's huge. Yeah, it's and really that's, huge. that's rewarding. Very much so. That's amazing. Well, we're going to take a short commercial break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk more about entrepreneurship in Hawaii here at The Economy New. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Aloha, it's summertime in Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm your host for Shrink Wrap Hawaii. We're on every Tuesday at 3 o'clock, and we talk about mental health and general health. Join us. Thank you. Aloha. How you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here at Gardo the Tech Star on Think Tech Hawaii, and I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Aloha. 
Good Thanks to have you, good, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? Hi, and we're back. Hi, I'm Chris Lee. I'm here at the, uh, with Think Tech Hawaii and the Economy and You. And uh, today's guest is June Dillinger. She has a company called I Do Hawaii Weddings. With, and the website is, I'm sure, oh, I do Hawaii weddings.com. It is. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so if you are interested in getting married, you should give June a shout, and she can tell you all about what she has to offer you. Um, now, June, um, I want to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship. I want to change gears just a little bit because, you know, running a business uh, anytime is fraught with lots of challenges. Um, you, you have people issues, and everybody is unique. Um, and um, one of the, the, you know, you have to deal with finance issues, right? So uh, spending is an issue. Like, how do you know, how do you figure out how to get the most bang for your buck? <laughs> well, when I began my business, I have to tell you, I was a sleuth. Mm -hmm. I looked at everybody else's website. I wanted to see what others were charging. I mm -hmm. wanted to see where I fit in. I wanted to see what their vocabulary was like. And that's not to mention that my website crashed twice. And I finally found uh, a format that worked for me. Mm -hmm. And so that, that, that's just the website portion. And the website portion is a daily exercise. For I Do Hawaiian Weddings to be in top form, there are mistakes that pop up that I haven't noticed because, gosh, maybe I'm having a glass of wine and I'm working at 1.23 in the morning and, mm -hmm. I've, and I've sent in a change. Don't you know that's the best time to write code for is programmers <laughs> at 1.23, especially after a glass of wine. You oh, know? is that yeah, why yeah, you're yeah. available <laughs> late at night? That's yeah. funny. That's good to know. Yeah, so it's, it's paying attention to those details of, mm -hmm. of the website, and that is just one piece of the whole pie because if the website has poor grammar mm -hmm. or uh, it's overlaid or there's something that's uh, um, lopsided about it, the people out, out in the real world go like, are you kidding me? That's so unprofessional. Oh, and I got to tell you about a new tool. I just got to do this because there is a new software tool called Grammarly. If you haven't seen it, folks, you can download it for free. It's called Grammarly and it will check your grammar no matter what you're doing on the internet. And it's Grammar L-Y, so G-R-A-M-M. Love it. E R L Y Grammarly, yeah, and it's a, it's a great little product, and it fixes bad grammar better than Microsoft Word does, it. and it's all real time, so it's really nice. I just I got to put a shout out for that little application that somebody I developed. I love it. Hey, I just got a text from my son today, and mm -hmm. he used the word to, spelt T W O, and then T O O properly, in a text. And I went, yes, <laughs> I love that. I was so proud of him. I was like, good job, mom. <laughs> So, you know, website is one whole right. very large piece. And mm -hmm. after snooping around and looking at others, and then I had to make it my own. I wanted to have my own feelings. And so that was the first piece. And then the second piece is, how the heck do you manage money when you've never done it before? Yeah. And uh, my mother used to, well, my mother still says, you have um, champagne taste and a beer budget, June. Mm. And, so you uh, either have to buy, um, you either have to switch over to very expensive beer or really cheap champagne. That's right. Yeah. And then my accountant says I, I wanted to quit, and both she and my mother says you can't quit. Do you realize how many people are making money working for you? You can't quit. Yeah. So then I become inspired. I'm like, well, maybe I can do this after all. Mm -hmm. And then I go back to the service itself and how it feels to be of service to others. Yes. So I'm not just being of service. Um, to the couple, but I'm servicing the contract workers that right. work for me. And you know, um, for parents out there, I, I always, um, as a parent, I always, one of the things I've always taught my children is live a life of, of service. If you live a life of service where you're, you're committed to the dedication, uh, you're dedicated to serving others, you know, that's where success lies. And I think that's fantastic. I'd love to hear that story because that's, yeah. that's, that's one of those values that you know we want to instill into our children and that's a great uh, segue back to the prison ministry because i was a volunteer mm -hmm. i volunteered for a total of five years at Wayava and halava and because i was of service the invitation came to me mm -hmm. to dive into this wedding business and then I, be, I i was able to call it my own but it was because i was of service so what i would say to anybody that was seeking is that if you don't know what you want, or you don't know what you're doing, go volunteer. I mean, there's plenty of places that would take you for not pay just to have you do some filing in their office where you can get the down low on what's going on and figure out, is this for you? Okay, so I don't want to work in a flower shop. Uh -huh. I'll go work somewhere else. Yeah, that's a great tip. Go be of service. Yes, yes, go be of service somewhere. Yeah. I actually, one of the things I used to do is take uh, temp jobs. 
as a, as a software developer, I go into a company on a, on a temp job. And uh, I'd kind of go in there and see what they were doing. And I'd yeah. go, you know, I have a way I can help you solve that business problem. I can reduce redundancy. I can help you streamline your data flow or, you know, all these sorts of things. And I picked up all kinds of interesting projects. And in the meantime, way. you are the gift to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. and how great does that feel? I mean, that massages an ego a little bit. Uh -huh. And it pays the bills. And so, it pays yeah, the bills. Yeah. Oh, you, you <laughs> have a smart, I like that idea. I didn't think of that. <laughs> well, now, you've hired people. Now, how do you manage, like, how do you figure out what to pay people? Because, um, you know, when you, when, you, when you hire these people, <sighs> you know, um, people aren't always, you know, it's not always about throwing more money. Sometimes there's more to it than just... Well, how, how much you pay them? You're right. Um, I've noticed as I've been hired to perform weddings for other services, mm -hmm. I know what they pay, and I know what my time is worth and what feels good to me. Mm -hmm. And I always want to pay more than what the standard is, just because there's there's value in money, but it also pushes the envelope for work a little bit. I think that people work a little bit harder at least the people that are with me, mm -hmm. because they're earning their keep and they're comfortable with the amount of pay and they feel worthy of that money. And at the same time, there are other, other um, vendors that I can't pay as much as they ask for. Mm. And their, their volume is different. And so it, it becomes a give and take. I mean, some of um, my vendors have said, Gigi, and I really like to l earn a little bit more for the amount of time I spend on this. And I'm like, well, how much would that look like? <laughs> and then they're happy to tell me, I'm like, mm, uh, okay, can we meet in the middle? Yeah. And then yeah. we meet in the middle and I see a change in both their attitude and mine and we grow again and then I end up paying them what they want because I go like, shoot, <laughs> they're so totally <laughs> worth it. Or as close to it as possible. Yeah, yeah. So it's really about communication. Yeah. And not being upset, but like, they're, they're, oh my gosh, they're willing to come speak to me and I don't want to have that boss vibe. Right. I want to have that colleague vibe. Um, yeah, and it's also, you know, there's this been this discussion about equal pay for equal work, you know, that's been going on out there for a while now. Like I hear if you're a man Democratic and Party. I'm a woman, as yeah, we are, yeah. we should both be paid the same. Right, right. And I taught my daughters, I said, I, but one of the things I taught my daughters is I taught them how to negotiate. And negotiate nicely, you know, professionally. If you don't like what they're paying you, go negotiate a better deal for yourself. Don't be afraid to negotiate a better deal for yourself. And I think, um, I think, um, you know, I, and, I, and I say that to my daughters because I think sometimes um, I look at my sisters and they're unwilling to go and negotiate a better deal. They feel afraid to, con to, to say to somebody, I think I'm worth more than what you're paying me. So um, for all those ladies out there that work hard and don't feel like that they're, they're paid enough, you know, don't be afraid to step up and say, hey, I think I'm worth more. I know I am worth more. Mm -hmm. My father always said to me, if you, if you don't ask, you don't get. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so don't be afraid to ask. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And if you, and I'm sure you, they could call you, June, and ask, and how do I ask that the right way? That, that <laughs> reminds me to say, so my uh -huh. wedding, my officiant st started at $95. Mm -hmm. And then I raised it at one to 125 and went, oh, God, that's so much. And then I raised it to 145 and went, oh, can I do that? And then I, I raised it to 195 and I went, shoot, I'm just going to raise it to 250 mm -hmm. And it's been there ever since. Is that right? And when you think of it, if you're going to get married, is not your minister worth two hundred and fifty dollars to perform your, mm -hmm. to stand between you and your beloved? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and throw in a bottle of champagne with it. For you, <laughs> I do it. <laughs> now, so you know, now business isn't always about good news. It's not always about more profit. Sometimes things get a little tough. You know. So how do you how do you handle? You know, one of the things is, is, is when you, how do you handle problems or, or, or people who maybe aren't, you know, they're having their own challenges? Uh, how do you deal with people where you have to sort of say, you know, I need, I need a little more from you? It's not so much from my, um, well, I guess on occasion it happens with staff mm -hmm. or team, team members where I need to say, well, I'll give it an example. <coughs> I have... Um, three photographers mm -hmm. and um, one of them was having an experience in their life that appeared to be reflected in their work mm. and I take a look at my other photographers work and take a look at yours I'm inviting you to take a look at theirs because theirs has a sense of 
juiciness and feeling and like light and there's something romantic and and fluffy and it just it feels so rich and warm and mm -hmm. and inviting it's like their wedding day and you could imagine being them in this picture i can't do that with yours right now and i want to keep working with you is there a way that you can shift to work through this and this person said i'm going to do my best mm -hmm. and they did mm. And so it's just how do I communicate with my people so that I'm supporting them in their world and they're supporting me in mine mm -hmm. and then we're all supporting our clients and our couples the best. Yeah, because, you know, it seems like in corporate culture there's this sort of <clears throat> it's okay to be critical component to, you know, where yeah. people can <laughs> criticize. And it's very diminishing. It is, and I don't want to be like that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there's uh, one company I work with and whenever I show up, I, I almost feel like I'm um, the, the there's the boss, and I feel like a little girl again. I'm like, shoot, I'm a 54 year old business owner. Like I I make money and I live uh, prosperously, and I feel like a little girl when I show up. And I'm thinking, what if I say something wrong? And I'm tiptoeing around this woman, and I'm thinking, how lame is that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's part of growing up and and learning to command my own my own sense of self. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, because um, I always found you very, very, um, you, you always sort of looked for the glass half full. Um, always. Yes. Hey, my son says, Mom, the, the world is not made up of unicorns, rainbows, and glitter. <laughs> I'm like, it is. It totally is. And that's the way I like my world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we, yeah. we create our own filters. Definitely. You know, yeah. So, um, now, you're, you've been at this for five years. What would you like to, where would you like to see yourself five years from now? Let's see, shopping in Venice, over in Europe, traveling, uh -huh. going to Beijing and Cambodia and, and while well, traveling. But um, business-wise, certainly, I'd like to be able to have a recreation and duplication of what I have now. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see that two or three times bigger. So it would be fabulous to be doing uh, anywhere from 40 to 60 weddings a month. So, I don't know if it's possible. So I'd like to challenge you. We have lots of people who are writing books in our Toastmasters group. <laughs> Yes. So how about writing a book about, about the wedding business and, and using that as a as leverage and going around and, and replicating your, your business? You know what? I, I'm surprised that you would say that and it's something that I've never shared with you. Ah. But uh, I have a book. Oh, you have a book. That I've been working on for almost 10 years uh -huh. and it'll be out in the spring. Well, there you go. All right. I gotta Although give it's it. not about weddings. <laughs> it's not about It's weddings. about divorce. <laughs> It's actually about uh, the benefit of our former relationships mm -hmm. and the good news that comes out of them. Yes, and you and know, as you know, I worked for 12 years to reform the family court system yes. to make it a less adversarial model, make it a collaborative model that supports and respects the value of parents and, and children and, and having a model that says, hey, you know, there's something that you did get good out of it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not kids, but sometimes if it's kids. And if it is kids, the worst possible thing you could do is go to war over your kids. That's and right. that's why we need to reform our family court system and say we need you both in the picture, you're both imperative, mm -hmm. you both have value. Let's figure out a way to have a collaborative, solid working relationship so that you're working together to lift up your children rather than Absolutely. tearing them apart in litigation. Mm -hmm. Lawyers hate that message, but you know what? We have to keep it going. Well, I mean, when the same-sex law was passed both uh, here in the state of Hawaii mm -hmm. as well as nationwide, there were a lot of attorneys saying, yeah, that's more money from my pocket. That's right. Well, you know, it's, the, it's, the, it's just the way it is. It's yes. balance. Well, let's, I wanted to let, as we're signing off here, uh, let people know it's I Do Hawaiian Weddings. I do HawaiiWeddings.com. If you it's want to find out more about June Dillinger. I-A-N, Hawaiian. Hawaiian. I do HawaiianWeddings.com. So check out June Dillinger's website. Thank you for, for watching the show today, and we'll see you again next week. Aloha.